Oh, there we go. Now we're live. Oh, it's on. We interrupt your regularly scrolling broadcast to bring you these important messages. Hello. Are you out there? Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Man, are we are we, you know, let me let me see here, man. Let me let me let me go to the page here, man. We're going, we're going to, see, if get, the page. see if I can get some see if I can get some sharing or something like that, we're man. Sharing. See what the deal That's is, right. man. Man, hey man, you know you got a, I got a, I got a new look on my Facebook thing here, man. I got a, I went dark. Oh, oh did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw, I saw you had that new suit on in that picture. You're looking dapper, Dan. What's going on? That was my, my, the whole theme of my Facebook page, man. Turned, I got, it has a light theme and it had a dark theme. Uh -oh. Um, and so now, like all the background is, is, is black and everything up in front of it is, is right. Shared oh. to my timeline. Oh yeah. So 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 that so that's like that old MySpace where you could like organize all that stuff. Yeah, and you could change like the theme of it, man. I'm digging this, dude. Nice. I'm digging this thing, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. Show 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 you ride. Uh, yeah. The whole the whole look is totally different, man. Interesting. I'm down so with we, that. Well, you know, we're all looking different. A little more scruffy, a little more. Yeah, you know, we we doing our thug thizzle, we doing our thing. <laughs> For all you out there, no, we did not die from COVID. No, we, we did not, here. man. Hey, you want to get started, man? What do you yeah, think? What do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm Boom. sharing. Boom, I'm sharing too. So that being said, I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. Ooh, we are the the one and only mad men of masculinity baby m3 in the house that's right and we're just real men having real conversations for you and tonight we got a, we got a real doozy for you and and to shout out to our fans out there i want to uh, i appreciate every one of y'all that like share and comment mm -hmm. i mean most of the time we feel like we're just talking to ourselves and i got some feedback this week that you know you appreciate us you, you mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff we're sharing is really helpful for you so please if you're watching this share like comment let us know if there's something yeah. you want us to talk about that's on your mind let us know because sometimes we got it we, we're, we're struggling to mix stuff up sometimes mm -hmm. we're not <laughs> you know a lot of a lot of times things come up man and we got you know oh let's talk about this or let's talk about that man and uh and yeah i mean i it's so it's a trip man because i, I get people all the time and say man matter of fact just this morning i was having a conversation with somebody and and uh and they were like remember when you were having a conversation about secrets and i'm like yeah well when you said blah 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 blah, what did you mean i was like i have no idea i don't know what you're talking about man like you know how long ago that was and so uh yeah. you know people man yeah folks folks uh folks be watching you know some of the old apps and all that kind of stuff so yeah if you're watching this hit like hit share matter of fact if you type in some comments if you're watching this live we can actually see your comments on the side of the screen over here so uh you know give us some feedback let us know what you think because this one i got a feeling this one might be kind of deep man oh, we're, we're gonna dive right into the deep end on this one i'm not uh -oh. I, this is this has been one of those times we didn't have to look very far for a subject because real life mm -hmm. has happened, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right we, both, we, we both wearing black t-shirts and everything, man. We yeah, both got no, beards no. and all that it's stuff, getting, man. Getting real now. I need to get my gloves on and get my power going. Let's go. We, Come on we even now. starting to, we even starting to look alike. What happened? <laughs> Good luck with that, man. Hey, Good hey, luck hey, with hey, that. Hey, I, you know, I tan dark, but I don't think you gotta yeah. worry about me catching up to you. Yeah, probably not because I don't tan light. <laughs> don't work that way man <laughs> that melanin is a one-way street man you know what i'm saying you <laughs> know it don't it don't it don't go that way man it don't go that way at all man so all man right. you, you got some stuff man so so what, what do you think man so so what's what's in your heart man what should we dig into today man well like i put like i put in a title know thyself and in Ooh. the description i put you know the, the only way to get what you want in your life and attract things that you really want is really to know thyself and that's what's really been coming up i mean as the connection catalyst as somebody who coaches people in connection what i'm finding more and more is your connection to yourself your foundation your self-awareness is the key mm. to getting all those things and and you know we talk about nice guy syndrome all the time and part of nice guy syndrome is looking to the feminine looking outside ourselves for that mm. validation mm. and so without that inner awareness without that foundational piece of this is who i am this is what's important to me this is what my purpose is we tend to be wishy-washy and we fall in the friend zone but mm -hmm. especially now with everything going on with all the fear going on all the covid the, all the stuff that there's a lot of people looking for someone to blame there's a lot of people looking for someone to so you know they may 
look at you and say, you did me wrong or you, you, you took advantage or you did this or you did that. And you have to be very aware of who you are and know yourself because it's really easy to get knocked off and go, did I, is that, am I, am I a bad person now? Because this person thinks this, mm-hmm. whether it's true or not. So knowing yourself, really being strong within yourself to go, I know who I am in my core and I would not do that. I, I'm sorry. They feel that way. I'm sorry. They've had this experience that they judged or turned around like that. But I mm-hmm. know for myself that I, I'm, I'm a good person. I know that that was not what I meant. And, and so having had that experience in my own life recently, there was like, mm-hmm. I should probably bring this out and share it because it's, it's, there's a lot going on right now. And I know there might be some people out there watching this where that's having other people direct their hatred at you or their, their hurt or their fear at you. So mm-hmm. being very, very clear about who you are and knowing who you are is, is very key. And in that way, when you know who you are, you track those people that are of like mind, you track those people mm-hmm. who resonate with you, you track those relationships, those clients, that business, you, you may attract your career that way. Mm-hmm. But when you're looking outside yourself, I mean, you know, we've talked about this, I don't know how many times for almost 40 years now, except for a a few spanning years in my teens and twenties where I did whatever I wanted. I've been waiting for somebody to say, you're good enough and mm-hmm. you can do this now. And I, and you know, I deem thee worthy. Mm-hmm. And, and that's comes from a lot of that nice guy syndrome stuff and, and feeling like, well, maybe I'm not good enough just the way I am. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm at the point now doing this work with you and, and all these other folks that I know who I am. And even though sometimes I doubt it, that <clears> core <throat> is pretty strong now. Yeah. You know, you know, you, you you use the two words several times right there. And, um, you know, I am are the two most powerful words in our language. Um, I believe that whatever you put after I am has divine power over your life. Um, and, uh, and and so to know to know what comes after I am is important in terms of who you are. Um, you know, I am is another form of, you know, to be. And so, you know when you can exist in that space, man, when you can exist like that, you know, then you can, you can kind of live out of that. But I think when you're able to live out of that, then, you know, then you're less susceptible to the, you know, the whole validation thing of, I need somebody to validate who I am. And for a lot of us, that's difficult because a lot of us didn't have anybody to help us build that validation muscle. You know, there's a difference between affirmation and validation, by the way. But, um, you know, I I, I think, you know, I think no one that create no one that that, or anyone that didn't create you should never even come close to having the power to validate you. And even someone that did create you, you know, at some point you you become your own thing and not what they created. And so. um, So, yeah, I mean, there's power in that in terms of who I am, because if you spend your whole life looking for validation, man, that's the tail wagging the dog and, and you always going to be susceptible to the next person's opinion. Um, us as guys, I would imagine mm-hmm. women as well. You know, we all, you know, I know I've talked to a lot of women that, that uh, unfortunately look to the media and look to, you know, Hollywood and look to marketing and all that kind of stuff to, to decide what their body should look like, you know, mm-hmm. Men have fallen susceptible to that too, but um, a lot of men look to women to decide what what their manhood, what their masculinity should look like, and that's <laughs> that's the cart before the horse, man. It takes a man to make a man. So you know, how can you look to a woman or femininity in general, you know, to to decide who I'm going to be as a man? That, that's that's we should be offering that to the world. Yeah, and that, I mean that goes right into kind of what we were talking about before we got on. You know, that goes into that victim mindset. If I'm looking outside of myself <laughs> for my validation and for my worth, then I'm a victim of that person's opinion, or I'm a victim of their thought process or or their belief systems. Mm-hmm. And if you're coming from your belief system and from from your core, then you're not a victim to anybody unless you choose to be. I mean, mm-hmm. unless somebody physically puts their hands on you, they're not victimizing you. You're victimizing yourself. Your yeah. thoughts. Emotions come from your belief systems, yeah. and and like you said, yeah, you can. We and we've all done that. None of us got out of childhood unscathed. We all had traumas and and things happen to us. But once you get mm-hmm. to adulthood, it's your job to heal those things. So look at those right. things and create strengths right. out of those traumas. But when we're still yeah. in that victim mindset, looking outside of ourselves, saying, "Oh, daddy did it to me," or "My dad wasn't mm-hmm. there," or "Mom mm-hmm. wasn't there," or "I was neglected," or whatever, that may be true, mm-hmm. but. And if you're not going to 
take responsibility to heal those wounds, to look at those things and turn them into strengths. Because what I'm finding, the more I am more self-aware, the more I stand within my power, the more I look at those things that used to scare me and, and turn them into strengths. You know, you turn, mm-hmm. around, you turn the bull around and head straight at whatever it is that is, is affecting you or you fear and find out what's behind it. Yeah. It, 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 you know, being transparent, I can I can say um, with this level of vulnerability that, yeah, in my childhood, in some ways I was victimized. Um, and and now that I'm 47, I somewhere to your point, somewhere along that journey, I have to change that that victimization. I mean, I was, I was, I was helpless. I mean, you know, it was, I was out of my control kind of thing. I got to be able to take that victimization. And now I can say I'm a survivor of that thing. You know, that's, that's, you know, a lot of terminology nowadays when it comes to, uh, you know, diseases, when it comes to, I know I do a lot of work in human trafficking and, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, now we don't say somebody is a victim of human trafficking. You know, we, we say that they're a survivor of human trafficking. And so, um, and that that takes the power back. And it's all about power, man. That, you know, knowing that self, it's all about power, man. And it's all about, you know, it's all about where that power comes from. That power in my mind, that power comes from me. That power comes from within me. That power comes from the God that's within me. You know, that mm-hmm. power comes from my my story. That power comes from my purpose. That power comes from all that kind of stuff, man. And so, you know, when you're able to take that victimization and frame it to a source of strength, then you own that thing, man. Then you can use that to, to do good in the world. Yeah, I mean, that's, I know in both of our experiences, that's what we were finding. All of our traumas, all the things that we've uncovered and and turned into wisdom. You know, we, we started to heal those traumas and some of them may never quite heal, but right, right. there's still things that we've said, I'm no longer a victim of this. I'm no longer yeah. a victim of that thing. Now I'm a survivor of it. Now, now I've healed it. Now I'm mm-hmm. working towards healing it mm-hmm. and with that comes the wisdom of it and as soon as you you reframe it from victimhood to survivor to to that mm-hmm. kind of wisdom thing mm-hmm. now you're capable of helping other people because there are other people having that same experience and what what is the, the, the greatest issue we're all having now is feeling like we're alone feeling like we're isolated like we're the mm-hmm. only ones mm-hmm. we have this great opportunity to take those things we've experienced all the traumas and use that as not a not a bad thing or not a, not a lack, but as a strength. It's, it's almost like that badge of honor. Like if we all wore military uniforms, we'd all have our medals and all those medals mm-hmm. would be from our traumas and things that mm-hmm. we've, we've dealt with. And now mm-hmm. we, you know, we, we've, we've passed that course. We, we've, we've finished that class. We got the diploma, we got the t-shirt, mm-hmm. we got the little funky mm-hmm. hat. And mm-hmm. now we go out in the world and help people with the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that kind of stuff becomes that that's your battle scar. That That's your, you know, I, I don't know if you could, I got a scar right here on my forehead right and, there. um, and you know, I ran into a trash dumpster, right. When I was young. And so, the, but there's a difference between a scar and a wound. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, my wound became a scar and I may wear that scar as evidence of the wound that I once had. And, um, you know, that, that's a reminder of that experience, but, you know, even to, you know, as you bring up the whole military thing, the way I've, the way I learned it a long time ago is the tradition of military ribbons and the military ribbons taking on different colors, it's almost like battle scars. I mean, it's the notches, if you will, from from the different awards. And so the parallel between that is all of my ribbons on my chest um, represent the things that I've done, the battles that I've been through, you know, in in the form of of military battle. So, you know, and and again, that, that becomes part of your unique identity. Every person in the military, for the most part, has their own set of medals and ribbons that they've you know, that they've earned. Some of them, we all get, you know, if, if we're, if the nation's at war, we all get the national defense, you know, service, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, if you, if you got a purple heart, that's because you got that scar. So point being, that becomes your identity and that becomes who you are and who you are, again, is where you get your sense of power, where you get your sense of, 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 of a focus and where you get your sense of validation. Yeah. I mean, for, you get to have your like since you're not a victim of those things, you survive those things. Since you're a survivor of those battles, your survival of those traumas, your survivor yeah. of that campaign, you yeah. get those medals as a trophy of I survived. <clears throat> and yeah. then, back to your point of the scars and things, and even the rank, way back in the day, they used to carve their rank in their arms, and mm-hmm. those were literal scars showing their rank. And so mm-hmm. now we get to have the figurative scars or maybe the 
more energetic, metaphysical, emotional scars. Mm-hmm. Those, are, those are our rank. Those are mm-hmm. the things that define what we've experienced and how we can, you know, yeah. be of service to others in the future. But yeah. that also, the caveat is you have to work on those things and, and yeah. remove the victimhood. I mean, my first two books were all about changing your perspective and looking at your life from the point of strength. Like maybe yeah. I chose this. Mm-hmm. If I chose this why, what did I experience and how yeah. can I get that moving forward? A question, why do you think why do you think a lot of guys um why do you think a lot of guys are missing that thing, that thing of of knowing who we are and 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 being able to walk securely in the in in the space of masculinity, in the space of, of manhood? Why why do you think why do you think I I mean, maybe it's an assumption. Maybe you don't think that guys do, but I mean, knowing you and knowing us, I mean, I mean, I think a lot of guys kind of walk in that space of I don't know who I am, and, and especially so far as to say, well, I need a I need a woman to tell me who I am, or I need to be like the way I think women want me to be, so I can get a woman. Yeah. Well, for me, it's there's there's three things that come right to mind. I mean, number one, it's either the lack of a healthy masculine role model or um, just not having, you know, the neglect or whatever. I mean, a lot of us grew up with, you know, the father made the money, the mom did all the raising of the kids. And so it was kind of hands off. So there was that neglect. Number two, nice guy syndrome. It was, you know, just the the ladies doing the best to raise the kids and raise their sons the best way they knew how, but not being men, mm-hmm. they didn't have a, a playbook or, or an innate awareness of what masculinity is. Mm-hmm. And um, number three, there's no rite of passage anymore. There's no, you are now becoming a man. There's no line in the sand like, okay, now you're 12, you're 13, you're 14, 15. Now you have this vision quest. You have this rite of passage to in becoming a man. You're not a man yet, but you're becoming a man. And so mm-hmm. all the men's work I've done, especially when it relates to nice guy syndrome, most guys just don't feel like men because there was never any, now you're a man or now you're becoming a man sort of thing. And so a lot of us just go, well, I still feel the same as I did when I was 16. So I must still be a boy. I'm just getting, my body's just getting older. Mm. Those are the three you know, really sometimes, man, sometimes it's starting to trip me out, man. Cause sometimes I can, like, I can serve you up a softball cause I almost know exactly how you gonna answer it, man. And, and, and all of that. Yeah. I mean, I, all of that were the exact things I had in my mind when I asked the question, man. And, and, um, and yeah, I mean, I think a lot of that comes down to the the work that we have to do as men. That, that, a lot of that's the work that I have kind of on my heart, even going forward. Um, you know, to to do and to to begin doing. And so, you know, uh, but I think if we don't, if we're not able to as men bring our masculinity into the room, then masculinity is missing in the room. Whether it's in the context of relationship, when the context of parenthood, in the context of purpose in the context of just being, I mean, you know, healthy masculinity should be in every room possible. And when we don't, when we're not able to walk in that, to walk in that space, to walk in that, um, in that role, then the world is missing and the world is lacking. And I think a lot of things that we're seeing in our culture is because we don't have healthy masculinity that's leading with you know, with purpose and leading with conviction and, and all those kinds of things, man. Yeah, and that brings it right back to the whole point of why I call this one Know Thyself, because your masculinity as a man, my masculinity is our own. And we need to be to know ourselves, know what our masculinity is, know how we walk in this world and be strong and foundational in that and, and create a strong foundation. Because mm-hmm. that's how we walk, that's how we show and share our masculinity. Mm-hmm. And releasing the old masculinity the old john wayne you know emotionless stoic masculinity but stepping into your own natural masculinity which is going to be some sort of balance and be unique to you i mean like we had the the new the the, the old alpha new beta kind of male um conversation before where mm-hmm. we're all alpha in some areas of our life and we're all beta mm-hmm. in some areas of our lives so mm-hmm. don't think that you have to be alpha in every area and that's what it means to be a man you know yeah. ceo Maybe the man at work, but get him in the in the in the yard or in the prison. He's he's not. He's mm-hmm. such a bitch. So and vice yeah. versa. So your own unique masculinity, and that's why you you must know yourself. You must know what drives you, what what your core beliefs are, what what your strengths and weaknesses are, and own those things because they're not <clears throat> even weaknesses are strengths when you know them and own them because you know what you're not good at, so you don't step on that playing field and say, oh yeah, you know, because that's what, what what the weak does. That's, that's what the insecure does. They, they lie and say, oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 I know that I can do that. And mm-hmm. then, you know, 
create chaos by attempting to do something they know they can't do. That's mm -hmm. a strength and that's wisdom and that's courage to say, oh, that's not a strength of mine. Mm -hmm. But I know somebody or I can, you know, ask for support there. So yeah. you as a man, even as a woman, if you know yourself, if you know your core values and you can stand strong in that, that's goddess energy. That's healthy femininity. And that's what we're all missing right now. I think a lot of people are freaking out because what they thought was their foundation mm -hmm. which was outside of themselves is being rocked right now. Mm -hmm. if you're strong within yourself. No matter what storm comes around you, you're good. You yeah. know you got this. You know that what your foundation is. You know who you are. Yeah, you know, culturally, we're getting upside down in a whole lot of things, man. And I think, you know, I remember being in different phases of, let's say, for example, the dating world, and uh, and feeling like I needed to, um, I needed to put on whatever in order to be attractive to women or to whatever. I needed to become this, I needed to do these things, I needed to say these things, you know, there's the, you know, I needed to have the game, you know, I need to be able to play this and say this and say that. And then, you know, and then you got to do this. And there's a whole thing out there about all that. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think, I think culturally, you know, culturally, just even from a masculine and feminine, man, I think, you know, I think a lot of women are forced to be more masculine than they really want to be because of cultural norms and because of the way society kind of is pushing women in a lot of ways. And I think the same thing with men that, you know, we're becoming more uh, feminine in a lot of ways um, because of, you know, because of the way culture pushes us that way. And I think a lot of times we can be upside down as opposed to just being who you are. Um, even if you are a man that tends to radiate more feminine essence or whatever, or a woman and vice versa, you know, but to be able to be that thing and let that be okay or not okay for somebody, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I mean, and not put on that front and just be you in order to be you, you got to know you, but to be mm -hmm. you and allow that, like I said, to either be enough or not enough or too much for somebody. And, and that's fine. It's like, I'm not, I'm, I may not be your cup of tea, but if I am a sweet tea. <laughs> that's right. I mean, that comes back to, uh, you know, the, the, the rule of thirds, you know, no matter what you do in the world, one mm -hmm. third of people are gonna hate you. No matter mm -hmm. what you do in the world, one third of people will not care. Mm -hmm. And no matter what you do in the world, one third of people are going to love you. Mm -hmm. So, and the only way to find out who those people are is by being yourself. Mm -hmm. You gotta be unapologetically who you are. If you're too much for some people, good. Be too yeah. much for them because you'll be just right for somebody else. And, yeah. and that's the thing is we've all been taught and that was how we were raised that to be yourself is to be selfish and you got to put everybody else first. And, yeah. you know, and selfishness is, is really just sense of self. It's not selfish. It's only selfish when somebody's not getting you to do what they want you to do. Mm -hmm. they don't, when mm -hmm. somebody's saying, you know, and that's, unfortunately we, we ra were raised in that shame culture. I mean, that's why I love Brene Brown. We quote her a lot because she's mm -hmm. bringing that to the surface that we mm -hmm. have this shame culture of don't be yourself, be who I want you to be. And that's in that. And we think somehow that's more healthy than being yourself. Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I just, if I just be what everybody else wants me to be, yeah. then I'll be okay. But the funny thing is, nobody knows who you are. And if you don't know who you are, then because everybody has their own version of you, just from right. their, their prejudices or their their mood that day or or just their experience of you. I mean, I remember in my 20s and 30s, there was like three Jasons. There mm -hmm. was Park Jason, there was Party Jason, there was Private Jason. Mm -hmm. And if I brought one of those other ones into, into one, one of those, they – freaked out. I remember having a deep conversation with some girl at the bar and she stopped looking at me and goes, who are you? I was like, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I brought private Jason to the bar. Sorry. I'm right, not. right, right. You know, so, <clears> you know, the, be you. the reason, you know, the reason why I'm a divorced man is because I got married. I went into marriage trying to become what a woman wanted me to be, or what I thought she wanted me to be. And the more I could not live up to that, the more I medicated that deficiency within the context of, of that marriage. And so, um, you know, and, and then even now, and, and even now, as I as I and you and we are into like the speaking world and, and all those kinds of things, it's really, you can be tempted to want to be like that. You know, I want to be like Tony Robbins. I want to be like Gary Vee. I want to be like Les Brown. I want to be like whomever, you know, this preacher or that speaker or that author or whatever. And you know, I think, you know, the more you can bring you, your gift, you know, to the, that's one of the things that, you know, I love about the, the boot camp. Uh, I go to the business boot camp. Um, Gary Barnes thing. I mean, one of the things he talks about, I mean, one of the things that we go through is just being you, man. Just, you know, 
bring in who you are and the gift of who you are to you know to the stage if you will and just be natural i mean you want to be presentable and you want to be an effective communicator but still i mean all the 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 slang the words that you use the personality that you use i mean the more that you're natural the more your gifts will flow man and the more you know you'll begin to attract those things and the more people will be like man i'll just kind of like that person just being naturally you naturally who you are yeah yeah i mean go back to like joseph campbell's one of my favorite quotes is the cave you fear to enter is where your treasure mm -hmm. lies mm -hmm. and for all of us i mean i like okay i'm not gonna say I quoted that in my book man see it's great <laughs> minds think alike let me tell you yeah. what but i mean that cave for most of us and this is just I'm being speaking generally because we, mm -hmm. you know, I can't get you all, every one of y'all specifically mm -hmm. in general, the cave that most of us fear, fear to enter is this cave right here. Mm -hmm. To our own heart, to who we really are, because we've mm -hmm. all been trained to be mm -hmm. what somebody else thinks we should be. You know, our mm -hmm. parents did the best they could. They mm -hmm. were just people and they, they told you what they thought you should be. And maybe they were right. Maybe they were wrong. Maybe they were partly right. Yeah. It's up to you to decide. And if you're still afraid to enter into this cave, Mm -hmm. You're not going to find your treasure, but once we enter this cave, once we, we mm -hmm. expose that treasure, once we have the courage, because it is fearful. I mean, that that is the most vulnerable place is to be who you are, mm -hmm. to be who you are for in front of the world. Because, yeah, two thirds of people are not going to like you are not mm -hmm. going to care. Mm -hmm. But one third are, are the people who matter mm -hmm. in your life. So, I mean, that's mm -hmm. that, that's been my journey. That's that's why I'm so fired up right now, because I'm in this place now where I'm like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want to share with the world, even though I'm shit scared most of the time. So excuse mm -hmm. my language. Mm -hmm. But that's you know what what when you enter that area, when 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 you show yourself to the world, you'll get some flag. But then mm -hmm. the people who stick around, those are your people. That's that's the that's the old. That's your that's, your that's your tribe. That's your tribe. We spend a whole lot of time fighting these external battles. We spend a whole lot of time fighting all of this stuff on the outside. And what we don't realize is that sometimes the greatest enemy is in me and man if we can if we can go in that place man and if we can if we can tackle that dragon if we can fight that demon then man so many other things outside of us will you know chains will just fall off but but to be able to you know especially when you deal with guys like i deal with guys with addiction and that kind of stuff and you know just having this conversation yesterday with a couple of guys but um you know addiction is almost a symptom of a deeper problem in most cases where somebody is actually medicating a deeper pain and so until you're willing to go into that and to heal that that pain to heal that thing that's on the inside man you're always going to be fighting that thing on the outside um but we so many of these things present on the outside that are really inside problems every ism is in him Ooh, i just made that up <laughs> every ism racism sexism classism genderism whatever kind of your ism is is i'm saying in him because we're guys and it it flows ism yeah. in him but whatever um <clears throat> but all of that's on the inside man and until we as people begin to deal with our own hearts and to begin to deal with our own insecurities our own fears our own pain and hurt and our own shortcomings and, and until we begin to deal with all that society as a whole is going to be a bunch of external stuff and there's going to be people manipulating our our external weaknesses for division as opposed to us knowing who we are and being i'm okay, like I, I should be okay disagreeing with somebody on social media yeah. i shouldn't have to put you down if you disagree with me i should be so secure in who i am that i'm cool if you don't agree with me man like i don't you know okay cool i mean you think that way i think that way um but but right now things are so divisive things are so vicious on social media because you know people are just lashing out at each other man because we're not collectively we're not secure about you know about who we are man and, and what we believe in, in our inside yeah i mean that, maybe the ism is in them or in them mm -hmm. that's, that's that's the thing when and it's 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 tricky too because we can actually use those things the, mm -hmm. the things that trigger us to find mm -hmm. out what's inside of us and what needs to be healed what the fear is mm -hmm. what, what that trauma is because the only reason we get triggered like when you're strong in who you are People can call you a purple dinosaur, all kinds of names. And mm -hmm. as long as you don't believe it's true, you're like, mm -hmm. well, okay, whatever mm -hmm. you say. Mm -hmm. Because some part of you, some some scarred up part of you or some wound is still open and you believe mm -hmm. that may be true that, oh, well, that triggers my unworthiness or that triggers my 
you know, neglect wound or that tr triggers my father wound or whatever, mm -hmm. because you believe it's true. And because so many of us have been taught to look for our validation outside of ourselves, we, mm -hmm. we now believe that our belief system, our political system, our socioeconomic background is who we are. Mm -hmm. That's why everybody is so triggered. So coming back to who are you really? Who do you really know who you are? Because nobody else. I mean, as much as we wish we could find that person that knows me better than I know me and mm -hmm. is my partner, mm -hmm. nobody's ever going to know you as good as you know yourself. And if you're not mm -hmm. taking the time to get to know yourself, you're mm -hmm. not going to find that perfect partner or that mm -hmm. perfect dog. It comes back to, I mean, I'm I'm the connection catalyst. I talk about relationships and, and talking to masculine and feminine. But really, the majority, 99% of the work I do is with each person connecting mm -hmm. to themselves. It's mm -hmm. This is where it starts. And if you're struggling, mm -hmm. turn around and look here. This is where you're going to find your answers. This is where you're going to find your gold. Because mm -hmm. if you're struggling in some area, mm -hmm. there's something that you're not addressing mm -hmm. here. So, so let's bring this plane in for landing. Let's line up on a runway here, man. So that being said, how do how does somebody know they get to know themselves? How does somebody find themselves, man? How, how does I mean, how does somebody accomplish this thing that, that we're challenging people to do, which is to know thyself? It's it really starts with stopping, taking some moments, deep breaths. I mean, meditation is great. You do want to have somebody to help guide you a little bit because a lot of times our blind spots are the things we 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 refuse to see. So having a coach or having somebody like me or Kirk to, to help you or somebody else to help you see those things and then turn them into strengths to, to show that you're not a victim anymore of those things and, and to turn you into a survivor of your past. Because, mm -hmm. you know, re if you realize it or not, you already are a survivor of your past. You've, you you have survived all of the worst days up until today. Mm -hmm. You are a survivor. And so I offer myself in service. I know Kirk offers himself in service. You just look down over here and you'll see our names and our mm -hmm. websites. Mm -hmm. Get in touch with yourself to mm -hmm. find that magic. When you find your magic and you become that Merlin in your life, the, the mm -hmm. alchemist, mm -hmm. you'll be able to create the things that you that, that you want, that you're striving for, that you feel like you need. Mm -hmm. It's all within you anyway. I mean, you know, Kirk has said many times, I have said, you know, we are the divine expressing itself. You are God in this <laughs> finite form. You know, the all mm -hmm. is one and the one is all. You know, man, I think um, I, I would say uh, I didn't think about the answer before I asked the question. So I'm kind of processing it now. Um, I, I think it I think it takes some time um, alone. I think it takes some searching. I think maybe it takes some, you know, some solitude. Um, it, it takes uh, yeah, some addressing some of that stuff. I think it might take counseling if somebody need, if you need help with your wound in terms of unpacking the bags from your past. Maybe you need formal, you know, sit on a couch cognitive therapy where you need, you know, some kind of LPC or something like that to, you know, to help you unpack that stuff. Maybe that's, you know, a coach. I mean, the different, you know, maybe the 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 sitting on the couch is unpacking the bags. Maybe the coaching is somebody, you know, somebody in this space that, that we're kind of in, but coaching to help you not only unpack your bags, but fold it and put it away um the going forward kind of stuff and, and so um and then yeah because i do think a lot of that happens in space with other people whether it's a group um whether it's you know one-on-one -on -one, um but happens you know happening in space with other people to help hold up a mirror to show you yourself and to show you you know what, what they see and, and then to help you walk through that kind of stuff but it, it takes work man and but i, I think there's not much more rewarding work and not much mm -hmm. more return on investment that you'll get when you invest in finding yourself, learning yourself, and and most of all, knowing yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and if you're anything like like Kirk and I, and have gone through this battle, if you're not there yet, I mean, it may be you need all of it. You may need counseling, mm -hmm. coaching, mm -hmm. and and to have somebody show that mirror. Because I know in my case, I thought I knew who I was, but that was all the old voices of trauma. And, and so it's, it, it's, it will speed you along your way to have somebody support you, have a group mm -hmm. support you. And what, what, what they will do is because most people, whether they realize it or not, everybody else, for the most part, who is taking the time to see them and, and feel their heart knows who they are. Mm -hmm. And if we have that hamster wheel of negative thought about ourselves, it's good to have somebody hold the mirror and go, here's who I see you as. This is what mm -hmm. I see. Because I know there's been a lot of times where a coach of mine or a friend of mine or somebody has said something to me and I went, oh, 
I never yeah. thought of myself that way, or I didn't accept that about myself, but yeah. you know, somebody say, this is how I see you. And so yeah. that, that's a service I offer as a service Kirk offer. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is what we do is what we're passionate yeah. about. And well, the, the reality is you'll never be fully fulfilled. I don't think in relationship um, until you know yourself, because otherwise you're not offering yourself in the fullest version of yourself uh, and therefore not experiencing the full return on that inver that version of yourself in relationship. Um, in purpose, whether that's your profession or your passion, um, you know, I, I think until you know yourself, until you discover and, and get to that place, you won't you won't be able to know what you have to offer the world. You won't you don't know what your superpower is. And so if you don't know what your superpower is, how can you be one of the Avengers? Right. So. Um, so, I mean, I think, you know, that work that it takes to do that. And then when somebody comes along with some story that ain't you. Then you child please, you know, yeah. and you can just, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm rubber, you're glue kind of thing. Um, but but that happens from that that work that 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 we're talking about, man. It's a pretty deep topic. And the last thing we'll say on this, and we'll 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 bring this plane in. Um, when you do the work, you will stop searching because you will become the magnet that attracts in those things. When you show yeah. yourself to the world. Mm -hmm. Because that's why we all struggle because we're trying to be something we're not because we think mm -hmm. that's what we're supposed to be to attract this person or that person mm -hmm. and that can only last so long every time we mm -hmm. have a relationship you get in there and you twist yourself up to mm -hmm. make them want you you mm -hmm. get them and then you, you can't keep that mask on for much longer and then mm -hmm. it falls apart because they said you changed no you just went back to being yourself mm -hmm. Once you become yourself and show the world you magnetize those things to yourself it mm -hmm. makes your life easier and so mm -hmm. it is the most like you said the most beneficial work the most rewarding work you can do yeah. so it's 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 up to you we're here for you guys we're here for you ladies we're, we're here for you i am jason b kinder the connection catalyst my man mm -hmm. over here is kirk m samuels got that right you you, you're pretty good at the opposite thing man i always get it i always get it backwards man i always i always start off that way and forget that it's that you, way you, but, you, uh, you, you didn't see my little test a second ago before i said it i was like oh you did that you were setting it up you were, <laughs> you were figuring it out ahead of time i got you i got you but uh, man, I appreciate the JBK man. This Love is you, good man. stuff, man. I'm glad I, you brought this up. I, I, I thank you. I thank all of you guys out there, and yes, we are sir. here to serve. We are here to spread the love. We're here to help mm -hmm. you find you. So hit like, hit share, put yeah. some comments in here. We'll see it after the fact. Tell, we'll tell us what you want us to talk about. We, we need you as much as you you need us. So let's get together. It's all about connection, people. Mad men of masculinity. Out. Yeah. Out. Peace. Love you. Bye.